Hey, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and today I'm gonna to show you how to succeed with Nylon X. Nylon has a variety of uses and is one of the most versatile plastics in manufacturing. From fabrics to ropes to gearboxes and drills in RC cars, it has a lot of durability and a lot of flexibility, and both of those together make them a great 3D printing filament. But it does have some shrink and it does have some warp. With Nylon X, adding in some chopped carbon fiber into it helps reduce the shrink rate, gives a production ready finish, and provides a really strong part. Dave printed out this gear bearing thing, then ran it over with his truck. First he rested his truck on it, and then he had to flip it this way to actually do any damage. And even still, that's pretty good for getting run over by a full pickup truck. So let's dive into what it takes for you to be able to print things this awesome. First off, you need to make sure your printer has an all metal hot end. Now what does that mean? Well, some hot ends are designed with PTFE lining on the inside, and those are limited to about 240 degrees Celsius, because PTFE will degrade after that. An all metal hot end doesn't have that limitation, and can go up to about 300 degrees Celsius. So an e 3 v 6 and other hot ends specifically designed for printers are already all metal hot ends. So be sure to check your printer specifications to see if you need to upgrade to something like an e 3 v 6 or if you're good to go right off the bat. Tip number two, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the Z offset for your first layer is set right. What I've found is that if my first layer is a bit too close to the bed, the first layer will actually rip off of the rest of the print without very much effort. The rest of the print has good layer adhesion, but the first layer just peels away without any effort. So just back it off a little bit, maybe increase your Z offset by about 0.05 millimeters, not much, but just a little bit. And then from there you can experiment if even that's not working. So just run some very small test pieces, see how that comes out, and then you're good to go. Tip number three, print bed and bed adhesion. With Nylon X, you just need a heated bed and a little bit of glue stick in order to work, but that's the same as regular nylon. So a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius, a good smear of purple Elmer's glue stick, and you're good to go. We have seen some success as low as 60 and as high as 80, so experiment and see what works best with your printer. Tip number four, calibrating your print temperature. When I print Nylon X, I'm printing at 260 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius for the bed. Now before you go and start printing a whole RC car, make sure you do a couple test prints with that temperature because I found that even though some printers report 260, it's not actually reaching that temperature because 260 on one printer and 260 on another, you get totally different layer adhesion. Like this PETG part. This was printed at 260 degrees Celsius, but snaps off with no problem, which is very unlike PETG. On another print I've done of the same part, of the same G code, wasn't breaking, it was solid. So make sure that if you're printing it at 260, that it's going to be strong because these are some incredible parts when your temperature is calibrated right. Tip number five, layer cooling fans and retraction. With layer cooling fans, much like ABS, you might see a little cracking and warping and splitting if you turn them on. So I generally print without them on and I get some pretty great prints. And for retraction, it's just like any other filament, you don't need to do anything special with it. It's not like a flexible where you need to have no retraction and whatever you have for PLA should work pretty well for Nylon X. Tip number six, print speed. Nylon X is pretty awesome in that you don't need to change your print speed settings. So 10 millimeters per second, 80 millimeters per second, whatever works for your other filaments will work really well with Nylon X. Tip number seven, and the biggest tip of all, make sure your Nylon X is dry. Since Nylon X is based on nylon, it's very hygroscopic, which means it is readily absorbing water from the air. Like a couple days and your prints are gonna come out terrible because of the air bubbles left in the print from the water vaporizing. So to reduce that, what you can do is you can take your Nylon X filament, and put it in a vacuum oven like we have, and leave it on and do that whole process. Most people don't have a vacuum oven, but they have an oven, so what you can do is put it in the oven, set it to 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and leave it there for about six to eight hours. And that will drive out most, if not all, of the moisture from Nylon X. At that point, take your filament, put it in a storage bin, make sure that bin's airtight, and you're good to go. Contrary to popular belief, desiccant does not withdraw moisture from filament. It'll pull it from the air pretty easily, but once your filament's wet, you need to put it in an oven to get it dry. So an add-on to the last step of putting it in the oven and putting it in a storage bin is to buy some desiccant, take all the little silico gel packets that you get with various electronics and put all that in the storage bin and keep that thing sealed until you're ready to use it. 
and as soon as you're done using it, you put it back in the bin and you keep that dry. Tip number eight, Nylon X is very abrasive, like super abrasive. Carbon fiber is pretty awesome, but it will tear up a brass nozzle. So you're gonna need to change your nozzle if you haven't already. So something like stainless steel, hardened steel, an Olsen Ruby, any of those will work. If you've never changed a nozzle before, don't worry, it's not that hard. All you have to do is heat up your hot end, use some channel locks to hold the heater block, and use a small wrench to hold onto the nozzle and unscrew it. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to do this hot, because if you don't, you run the risk of ruining the threads in the heater block and the nozzle. Once that happens, it's a whole process to get that fixed. Just make sure it's hot. Make sure it's hot when it goes back together. Otherwise, you're gonna leak Nylon X everywhere. It's a whole other problem. So make sure things are hot when you're putting it together. And that's it. It's a lot of information, but with this, you should be able to start printing Nylon X and start printing it successfully. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.